Hello, Aku here again. Welcome to episode 28 of my Feed the Beast Ultimate Beginner's Guide. I've got a bit of a different thing to do today. Something I've been a little bit remiss on is... Um, by now, if I didn't have this power suit, I would have definitely wanted to have an XP grinder. And I've been a bit slack on making one. I, I've been a bit slack on getting a source shard together. Well, I've just been in a, into a couple of miscraft ages. And I've managed to fill out with a skeleton source shard up. So this episode, I'm going to be building a... XP spawn it. There's, there's a couple of ways of doing it and I want to talk through each way of doing it. But uh, before we get to that, I kept putting them bees back in here and I think these may be, I've just checked these and there's three industrious in there. I'm not sure if they're pure or not yet. Let's have a look. They might all be hybrids. Let's have a look. These may be pure. If they are, industrious, industrious, excellent. Excellent. Great stuff. So I've got my industrious bees done. So now if you remember, we've got our Imperial in there, and now I'm gonna get rid of these cultivated for now. And I'm gonna put that one, I'm gonna put the normal, normal one in there. See, that one had normal life, that one had um, normal worker, sorry to say, that one had not slow worker. So I'll put that one in. We'll try and get a normal worker rather than the slow one. And that one can just go in there. These are all the hybrids and um, pures that I got from that little breeding thing. I kept putting them back in to try and get the right combination, and I eventually got. I eventually got the industrious so very good very good and a couple more of them out of there put them in there keep the uh, speed of the imperials going they'll need replacing soon so now we've got industrious and imperial they're the bees that you want they're the ones that we want to start getting plenty of product from royal jelly dripping combs and the imperial uh, the industrious will start giving us the the uh, pollen and the comes up there drops so that's all good so i went to miscraft ages i made a couple of new ones and those are not very good to be honest if you remember before when we made some miscraft ages i put all the ones in here i was up to age 12 well i made 13 14 15 16 those all sky islands i couldn't find a abandoned library near any of them so i went back to age three the flat one because it was flat and um the useful thing about it being flat is, especially now I've got the speed of the modular power suit, especially when I've got flight control on, it's ridiculously fast. So I just flew around in that flat world until I found a couple of the facts. Let's just go back. I don't want to dwell too much because I want to get all this enclosed in one episode. So if you want to watch how to make a soul shard spawner, soul spawner. I pretty much just flew around in this flat world really quick, bobbing around on the surface until I found a hill. And when you find a hill, it's going to be a um, Thorncraft hill. And that means it's going to have a skeleton spawner in it and it's going to have a zombie spawner in it. So I took the skeleton spawners, added them to our wither skeleton soul shard, and should have really remembered which direction I went in. Oh, I should have actually probably filmed me doing it. Um, I found a couple of skeletons, uh, skeleton spawners, in a couple of Thorncraft dungeons. And so look at that, I'm like nearly a thousand meters away from the book already. Um, so that got us the, with the skeleton soul shard, to full. Now, if you're using Ultimate, same version I am, you can you can cheat if you wanted to. There's, um, you can combine soul shards in an anvil. I try not to do that, but uh, I did do it when I, before I realised it was cheating. Since I realised it's cheating, I don't bother. But that's up to you. If you want to combine soul shards, that's an easier way of getting soul shards. Ideally, by this point in the game, you want to be looking at getting uh, wither skeleton. You want to be looking at getting enderman and blazes. Now we've got. I've got a blaze, this has got 25 kills in. But now we've got plenty of armour and movement. We could go into the uh, nether and start hunting down blaze spawners and fill that up pretty quick. That's five, five blaze spawners. You can find that in a couple of fortresses if you're lucky. Um, if you're not lucky, it might take a bit more. But Right. The thing with the wither skeleton one is most soul shards, if you can put them in a soul cage. Let's make a soul cage. That's probably the next best, the next thing to do. Um, there's six of them, and actually, what I'm going to do is, how much vial essence have we got left, and where is it? I think it's uh, 
Just turn that off because it's going a bit crazy. I think I've got some vial essence in here. No. Eight. I've got some there. Excellent. Vial dust. Vial dust. Is that the stuff I want? No, let's combine that with glowstone, I believe. Let's make some more soul shards. Get them ready. Yeah. What I'm making here is just iron bars. And what I'm making here is some of this corrupted essence stuff. And I want to find out, remember where I put my um, soul forge. Wonder where the hell that went then. Oh, I know where it is. It's there. Look, stuffed in the wall there. I put eight corrupted essence in there. One diamond. One diamond will use up eight of them, so there'll be one left still. And that'll get three more soul shards that we can look at later. I'm just gonna sleep since I've been into a miscraft age to reset my spawn to the overworld. And right, so iron bars. Put them in a square pattern. We've got enough for two there, so I'm gonna make two soul cages. Now a soul cage is just the empty cage where your soul shard goes in. Um, in the 1.5.1 version, this is going to be quite a bit different. The way this all this, this all mod works. So I wanted to make sure I showed this in the 1.4.7 because, like I said, I'm going on to the 1.5 as soon as it comes. You might not be. You might want you might want to stay on a stable 1.47, or you might not be using the ultimate. You might be using Minecraft or or uh, Die Wolf, which is similar to this pack but not exactly the same. And if you are then there isn't going to be a 1.5 version like they went to the 1.6 so you will have this version of soul shard so I, I thought I'd best show you how to actually make a little soul farm with this type so you can place a soul cage down you could put I could put that in there but the wither skeleton is unique in the fact that wither skeletons are coded a bit weird they're generally just skeletons from the nether which is why we can put skeleton spawners in from the overworld and it still adds to the wither skeleton one um, if you break this it'll become a normal skeleton spawner we don't want that to happen so I'd only want to place this once so ideally you need to know exactly where you're placing that because you don't want to break it again there's pretty much there's three basic ways you can make a sp spawner an XP farm one of them would be to have your cage above a large drop and have it so that you need to work it out so that the things in the cage drop so they've only got half a heart of health left. Now, they take fall damage, like like you would if you didn't have um, armor on. So you've got a... It takes a little bit of trial and error. I'm going to switch to my server for a second. No, I'm not. It's not up. That was a bad move. I should have not done that. Um, I can't do that because the server's not on. My... With a skeleton spawner in there is a drop spawner. You pretty much just set things up so they drop the right height and then you need somewhere killing at the bottom then there's a couple of ways of doing that one way is using melee turtles and another way is using farmcraft iron golems they get the finishing blow or you can do it yourself by punching them having it set up so you can punch them whatever gets the finishing blow if it's the xp turtle or you or the iron golem iron golem needs a thing on it called a visor that means it gets XP and then you need somewhere collecting the XP so if you're doing it yourself you get the XP but if you're not doing it yourself you're going to want the what the jars from Thorncraft the other way of doing it is by using um, Man Factory Reloaded to get the liquid essence same as with the cows that's the way we're going to do it here we're going to do it the Man Factory Reloaded way um, just because it's the easiest way of doing it at the minute the thing with that, it costs power, but we've got plenty of power, so that's all right. Um, I've set a couple of things up. I'll be back in a bit. I'm going to set a couple of things up to show you how we could have done the other ways as well, just uh, just so you know. And there's, all, of course, there's a difference between XP grinder and item grinder. Now, if you want an XP grinder, you actually want to be able to give you XP on your XP bar. The way we're doing this, in technically that, what it's going to do is it's going to give the essence which can be turned into books speaking of which I've got a couple of more in the dungeons where where um, I've got the ex the skeleton sp spawners there was a couple of books in there I've got an infinity book and an aqua infinity book aqua infinity lets you man underwater at full speed if you put it on your helmet um, infinity means you, your bow you only need one arrow and you never run out of arrows pretty useful if you use a bow um, and our general 
XP essence coming from the cows there. It's been working away. It's got a few more bucks. So we've got now we've got power three, frugal three, vocal two, knockback two, protection three. So we're getting a couple of more bucks there, but it's a bit random. You may want to get XP yourself. XP yourself is going to take a bit more doing. Because as I say, I'll, I'll be, I'll, when I come back, I'll show you the different ways of collecting XP. So back in a bit. Okay, so I'm back and I've been looking at the various ways you can get XP from mobs. Now, I am probably just going to make this an MFR farm. I think I might, I might have already said that. I'm probably just going to make this an MFR farm and use the books. But if you didn't want to use that, there is other ways. And the main ways, there's two main ways of doing it. And you can see close to both of them in my inventory. Um, if you remember before when I was doing some Thorncraft research, the book was all filled in. Well, the, the book went back to where it should have been so um, the book's not filled in again so I've had to do some research to get to where I wanted to go I researched a couple of things and uh, I researched a couple of things by mistake trying to get the right things but I, didn't, I had to research it because I started researching them what I was going for is brain the jar so if like, you need warded jars and a brain the jar I'm going to make one of them in a minute and another thing I wanted which you need the theory of everything for is advanced golemancy now the theory of everything it's that's what lets you make your your big style one, the one with the nether star. No, we don't actually need that yet, but advanced golem I'll tell you what that lets us make is uh, an iron golem. Iron golems are the, are the one we really want here. And I'm going to give it an intelligence core. So I researched that as well. That's a basic core, which is just brick and nitro and a fire shard. So I've got one of there. And I've just I made the basic core and then the fire shard. It needs 12 learning, so 12 learning is just uh, six bits of paper. I'm getting a bit low on paper. Let's throw some out there. Throw that into it. Throw it on the floor, douche. Throw that into there. That'll let us make a golden intelligence core. Now we just need five iron. Let's find the iron. That's one iron. That's more iron. One, two, three, four, five. Well, let's just make is an iron golem. And then the reason why I put intelligence on is I'll show you once I've made it. But um, so twelve arrows, twelve animus, twelve melon, twelve leather, uh, leather, twelve of them. This is going to be a bit messy. I want to throw loads of extra stuff into the atmosphere here. Loads of extra flux, but uh, I'm just gonna do this quick so I don't really mind. Um, six of them. I oh, see I could use melon here and it wouldn't have put any messes in the atmosphere, but I just quickly used them apples. Um, 12 arrows, that's easy enough. Now, you see all these things in here, these are all good things for Thorncraft. Vacuous chests is like the whirlwind one, flint as the working one, that's the hammer and the axe there. Uh, paper is good for the book cognito and aqua leather especially if you've got a cow farm is good for the armor one tutorman on the right there so plenty of things in there that are good for research uh, animus we are going to need uh, a bit more sore sand so i actually can't do this yet i need to go i've got any sore sand no i've got some in there that's okay uh, 12 12 sore sand I've run out of soul sand there. Twelve soul sand into there. Now we've got loads of extra, loads of extra stuff in there that's going to get thrown into the atmosphere as soon as I do this. So we just flux. You can't tell because I've got no thumbcraft uh, goggles on, but we just flux the area quite badly, probably. Um, but it's okay. This the, still ain't good enough though. What this can do, this can kill stuff. Now, if I just plus, put this down for a second, the reason why I made it intelligent is because I wanted to show you. If you make it intelligent, then you get this bit here. So, your normal one that's not intelligent, so if you just put a normal core, or a speed or strength core, then you can't get it to select animals. I'm not sure if you can do it to select any of these, but I think it only just attacks monsters, whereas if you do the intelligent one, you can say animals, is like if you want to use it in a cow farm, chicken farm, whatever. Players, obviously, if you wanted to defend your base, um, 
a bit of man on the server. He had about 20 of these in his base with a book set to a book called The Best Place in the Game Ever. And he killed a couple of people on the server by them going using the book and found himself amongst about 20 angry iron golems and uh, creepers, which they don't do by default because they don't want to cause explosions. So you can set that. I didn't really need that for this, but I just wanted to show you that, so I made it an intelligent one. But that's still not good because this guy can kill stuff, but he doesn't get his XP. What you need is these things, knowledge fragments. Knowledge fragments, you put into a nine crafting square, so you get a research nut, which we've got there. And I've already started one of these, research nut. I've got one in there. And what I started researching, I started researching with Mortis. Now Mortis, you get off... Um, the cheapest thing is rotten flesh. That's got it there, look. And I started researching with that. There's about seven of these things, that research notes from from them fragments. I always start researching with Mortis because that's only in the visor. So if you're lucky, Mortis will work and that means you get the visor fair. So I see it's got paper, leather and carrots. Now I'll just grow some carrots. I say, I say carrots. Uh, Vism is in carrots. It's also in glowstone if you've got plenty of glowstone. So I'll use glowstone. Um, so I've skipped most of the... That's not going to be enough, is it? No, have I got any carrots growing out here yet? I planted some carrots because I was going to need some. but uh, They're not growing yet. They're carrots, but you can't see the top of the carrots, so they're not growing yet. I'm just going to grab a bit more glowstone, which I don't really like using, but especially because carrots seem... Well, carrots are cheaper, but uh, at some point... If the server was to last longer, I would have the demonic bees, which give glowstone. But as it is, I want to use a bit of the glowstone. There we go. Golem visor. What that allows us to do is now we can craft a golem visor. And what that does, that lets us use the golem for XP. So iron helmet, iron iron. It's pretty straightforward. Okay, let's do that really quick. And uh, one, two, three, four, five, two more. In fact, I'll cut. I met this back when I met it because um, you get the gist with making stuff. It just takes a little bit of time. I don't want to waste too much time doing this when I could be showing you other stuff. So I get this made just by putting the right aspects in there, and I'll be back in a sec. Okay, I'll just quick, quickly use some bone meal on the carrots outside. Grow some carrots. And now we've got them in there, we've got the other stuff in there. So there we go, accessory visor. And now if we right click on this guy, now he looks like Robocop. And now if he kills stuff, he can get XP. So that's all good. The other thing we need is a warded jar. So let's look at warded jar. Now we'd need a warded jar for the the XP, the melee the turtle version that I ain't got to yet. Um, we need that for that as well. That's pretty straightforward. Warded jar. Brain, spider eye, bucket water, some stuff. And what a jar needs a bit of arcane wood, some glass. So I'm going to make these things, I'll be back when I've made them. And then we'll talk about turtles for a little bit. Okay, back again, and I'm about ready to go with a water jar. Now, the, what, the brain in the jar should I say. It. The water jar is pretty straightforward. That's just arcane wood and glass panes make your water jars. Arcane wood is just you know, the great wood trees, the big thorncraft trees. I've got one out here, I can show you nice and quick. And that's one there. There's dark wood, two by two trunks. Their thorn craft trees are called great wood. And you put four bits of great wood in a two by two in your arcane work table there. And that makes it into arcane wood blocks. You can do it with normal wood as well. You don't have to, have to use great wood. Let's have a really quick look at that. I think it's in the magical building blocks. There you go. You can use nine bits of any type of wood in an arcane work table. Or you can use four bits of the great wood, so we could just use normal wood. That gets you the arcane wood for there. That gets you the water jar. While I was doing it, I just made some goggles revealing as well. They're pretty straightforward. Um, thermometers, it's just glass and water shards. And then it's just two of them with a bit of gold for the bridge of it. And some leather for the straps. In your infusion altar. Gets you some of them. Now I could wear them like so. And then... Um, no, we've got uh, aura meter down in the bottom left. It'll also tell you the aura, the, what aspects are in your crucible and stuff. But I'm not going to use them like that. I'm going to use them as part of my power suit. So if I go to the helmet there, I need a hologram meter as well. So I'll do that off camera. 
Well, I'm going to add them to the element there. So we'll have the aura meter. It doesn't have the other stuff, doesn't show you the nodes, doesn't show you the actual aspects of stuff, but it, it gives you a meter, so that's all I really want it for. So I'll be putting that in there at some point off camera. But for now, we can just stick them out of the way in the bag. And stuff for this, source and a zombie brain is going to get us the aspects we need for that. So, plonk, plonk. And now we need a wand, I've only got one wand. I think I maybe lost one wand when I died the other day. I'm pretty sure I made two, but I've not got two anymore. We've got Brain and a Jet. We get our bucket back. And now, any XP that this guy ate earns, if that's near him, the XP would go into the jar, and then we can come and right click the jar, and we can get XP. So that's your Thorncraft way of doing stuff. You still need this to collect XP if you're doing it the Computercraft way. Computercraft way. Now, I just tried doing a pay spin get of a program. That's there's a thing called Payspin, a website that people can just dump code to. And this is how you get Lua code, which is the programming language of Computercraft. Payspin get, and then you use the code of the program. This is one just called Melitel that I just did a quick Google search for. And then you give it a name that you want it to be called in your thing. So let's call it Melitel. And that ain't working. That works when I play on a server, so I'm not sure if that's because I'm on a single player at the minute and I need to change something to enable HTTP. I thought that was all set as standard these days, but that doesn't seem to be working, and that's something that I've, I'd probably have to use an episode just to go into on its own. So we're not going to do that just yet, but to show you how to make a turtle, really straightforward. A computer's really basic, redstone, glass, and smooth stone, so that's all vanilla stuff. You surround that with iron, a chest, again all vanilla stuff. And then to make it into a melee turtle, we had a sword. It shows a diamond sword there, but if you've got red power, you can use the sapphire, green sapphire, or ruby sword as well. So there we've got melee turtle. And now if we place this guy down, you can go into this guy, you get a program there, and we could write a new program. So let's edit uh, melee turtle. And that gives us a program there, and let's write a real quick program. This is the actual the program that I just tried downloading, paste bin in. If turtle dot attack then for I equals one sixteen do Sorry, I was just checking that. I don't need that there. Oops. Do and then I said I don't want to do anything on camera. But, uh, I probably shouldn't be doing this on camera to be honest. Because uh, it's very boring watching someone else code. It's very boring coding, if I'm being honest. Uh, but doing some, watching someone else do it is even more boring. I'll I'll, I'll do, do this really quick and then I'll. Uh, cause we're nearly done here already. I want to end that. I want that back one there. Do not do not really matter where these these go. It's just uh, like um, kind of expected to do it a certain way. It's kind of um, that's where people code is to make it so that everyone can understand their other people's code. So it's kind of conventions you follow, like the way it steps in and stuff like that. There we go. Then basic program there. And then save that. That's saved to Melly Turtle. So now if we control and exit that, we can type in spell it right. Well that guy should be attacking. See he's attacking there. So that'll just keep trying to attack. And uh, whenever it gets anything in its inventory, that's what the eye 1 to 16 is that for I 1 to 16 that's just a little for loop what it'll do is it'll check these and it'll run through and see if there's anything in any of them if there's anything in any of these it'll drop it onto the floor so what you need is some kind of maybe a void uh, uh, obsidian pipe or a transpose or something underneath that and it'll just drop stuff into that you'll see that'll just keep attacking 
And to get rid of a program in there, you press Control T, hold it down, that'll terminate your program. So now it shouldn't attack me anymore. So we've got two ways of killing stuff there. We can either have a golem where the mobs are, or a turtle where the mobs are, and that'll be on a drop. That'll be in a drop thing. So you drop the mobs down from a height. So you have your spawner up there somewhere. You drop them down so they land in an enclosed area with maybe half a health, half a heart of health left. You go them or your turtle, give it a whack. And you need something to floss to suck up the drops. And this guy suck up the XP from either of these. And in this this guy's case, it'd drop items into here, which you didn't have to which would then drop so you'd have, to, you'd have a transposer or a pipe under it this guy he didn't collect stuff so you'd have a transposer in the middle of the floor and that's how you get your items and your xp so that's how you do an xp grinder to get actually to actual xp the way we're going to do it though is just going to, just going to do it to grind books so i'm going to go back to this place now i'm going to start setting up a little thing down here with um, a thing from mfr called a grinder which you've seen upstairs, what we've got on the cow anyway. That's what we've got on the cow thing. I'm going to make another one of them. And just as it kills cows, it'll kill mobs in the same way. So, this guy here, it'll kill mobs, any mob. That's just a mob grinder. We've got it on cows, but this will kill anything and it'll take the drops. And it'll put the liquid XP out the back. And we'll start getting more XP from our wither skeletons. And we can, have a, we can do it like that. So, I'm going to set stuff up off camera and I'll be back in a bit right so here we go we're starting to put together our little spawn area and uh, I've not done everything yet I've got to make the spawn out which you've seen before but I thought I'd make it again because it's nice and quick we can do that on camera there we go usual stuff piston golden sword book gets us the grander and that guy goes there and what we've done with we're giving him power we give him a liquid outlet to go to the enchanter and uh, we give him a place to put his stuff so we've got a chest there now these things these are the same as vanilla spawners the the way a spawner works is it goes in an 8 by 8 square with the northwest corner so this corner here is the center of the 8 by 8 so it's like I used to always think it was 7x7 seven seven and with this in the middle, but it's not. it, it doesn't class like that. It classes that very corner. So that very corner there is, your, is the centre of your 8x8. Eight eight. So you can go four blocks in each direction from there. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So you see there, I've had to actually put... If we run round here real quick. If I didn't put this glass, this extra layer of glass in here, so I've gone two thickness. If I didn't put this glass in here, mobs could have spawned just here, because this is within the eight by eight. This, these four, uh, these four blocks. So mobs could have spawned here. So I'm not sure about the height. It's four by four by three. So this is within the three. So I think mobs could spawn here. So just make sure, because that's within the eight by eight. I've covered it up like that, made that double thickness. So that makes it right. So I always remember that it's the Northwest. It's the lowest x y coordinates, which is the northwest. If you think we're at minus five eighty, so we're we're well into the west of zero on the x plane, and the y plane we're actually plus two hundred, so we're down to the south from um, from zero. So northwest would be the lowest. It'd be minus minus is that direction. So one two three, and an extra one four there, and then one two three. And we've got no gaps behind this wall. So that's alright, that's solid. Um, I have to replace that with a bit of nice looking basalt there. Because that looks ugly. So here's our, it, this is going to be our square. So I generally bring it in so we've got a 2x2. Two two. Well, we've got a 5x5 five five actual spawning area. Because the ground works on a 5x5 five five area. So any mobs that spawn in this area, the ground will be able to kill. So, there we go. If we fill all this in, we don't, we don't finish quite yet. There's one more thing we need to do. Because it's a tier 5 spawn, you can turn it on and off. We don't want it on all the time. Because we want to be able to control it. So, we're going to make something else new, which we've not made before. And that's Wireless Redstone. Wireless Redstone from Chicken Bones. Very nice little mod. Very useful. Very extremely useful. Um, so, put that in there. So, I need to replace that ugly bit that we're... Uh, 
I'll, go, I'll take all of them anyway. Wireless redstone, very useful and pretty straightforward. We need a bit of enderpearl for it, so I'm going to, have to use a bit more iron with the minium stone. Now, once you've got a mob spawner, the, the mob spawners you want with a skeleton is good. Blaze is good. Enderman, very good. If you're going to have three, they're the three you're going to want. So we're going to, we're going to, we're going to want to start working towards an Enderman spawner as soon as we can, really. Sorry, I just had to adjust my mic there. Um, and for that, we'll need to get an enchant onto this Vile Sword. We'll have to get Soul Stealer on there. Start killing Endermen. We could use the cheaty anvil thing, but I don't want to. But um, we'll do it legit. Right, the way you make these, first of all, you need a thing called a wreath of pearl, which is an ender pearl surrounded by glowstone and redstone. Oops. Like so. That gives us these things wreath of pearls. And then we also need a bit of obsidian. So I'm going to grab a bit of obsidian out of here. And if you put obsidian once off another, you get these things. Obsidian sticks. Our wreath of pearls go on top of the sticks. Become wireless transceivers. Now one of these we need to make into a wireless receiver. So that needs a dish. So for the dish, we want some stone. And we put that into like a little dish shape. That gives us a stone ball. Combine that with that. We've now got a receiver dish. I think we need two more of them. And now all we need is some of the wafer things that we use for when we made our timer. So let's look at in fact let's let's look at everything that chicken bones has to offer us. Uh where are this redstone chicken bones edition red power core add-ons. Let's look at the red power version. There we go, we've got wireless receiver, wireless transmitter. Now if red power's not in the pack, there's a different version of these. But because red power's in, this is what this these are the recipes we get. So you see there, transceiver we've made, obsidian stick we've made, we just need some stone wafers and stone wire. And that's exactly the same apart from it's got the it's got the ball there that we've put in. So we need four of these wires, two of these stone wafers. Now I should have some of these because I made some I made some timers before, didn't I? But I don't know if I made just the right amount. Well, there's some of them, and we need four of them. Let's just combine them with some redstone, nice and easy. And I never used these for a long time because I thought it'd be real complicated, but it turned out they're really straightforward. So all we need to do now is we need one transmitter and one receiver. There we go. And then what we need is one lever let's get that what we can do now is if we go to our spawn cage what i'm going to do here is i'm going to pick that up a sec i'm going to break the block underneath it and i'm going to put our wireless receiver down there like so and while well, i'm here let's just sort that out now you could just wire this up but it's easier doing this, obviously if you're doing it as a drop, so if we was doing like a 40 block drop then we definitely want to do it wireless because you don't want to put wire for 40 blocks. It just makes things a lot easier doing it this way, using a wireless. And wireless is useful for very for lots of stuff. Turn it around with our screwdriver. And what we're going to do, we're going to give it a frequency, let's give it 999. So here you can see there's, you can set the frequency up here, that just sets it. And then we can give it a name, so let's call it with the scale, set the name there. So now 999 is set to with the skeleton, with the scale, skeleton. And now what we can do is put our soul cage back on there, like so. So then that's turned on, which we ain't got it turned on yet. But what we can do now is we can put our, just do it ugly for now. Put that there. Set that to double click on that, and it'll set it to the same now. So by putting the name in, you can just double click on the name there. If you're on a server, there's certain private frequencies you can use as well, which uh, I can I can show you a different at a later date. But you know, if you turn that on, that's turn that on, which is also turn that on. So when a tier five spawn shard has a redstone signal on it, it will not spawn. So now we can safely put that into there, and no skeletons are going to spawn. It looks like a normal skeleton because we're in the overworld, but it will spawn with the skeletons. 
Now what we have to do is fasten that up. Now when we turn this off, if everything was right, we should get no mob spawning outside because I wet it out correctly. This is going to start killing stuff. There we go. You see it's putting liquid essence out pretty quick. You can see it's getting as coal and bones. It might not get as wither skulls. I think the code might have been changed with that. I'm not 100% sure. There we go. We've got an XP grinder that's getting as liquid essence. You can see that's filling out pretty quick. What this is going to do is it's going to be taking quite a bit of power though, so it might actually be affecting how much power we've got in this. Uh, it's maintaining it for now, so that's good. So it's not taking more than 100. And sometimes it'll go into its idle bit and then it'll start killing once it gets out the idle again. That's going fine. It's keeping it's maintaining its power load. Nothing spawning outside the cage. And that will be filling up pretty quick as you can see. Compared to what it was with the cows. We're, fi we're filling up pretty quick. So we are relying on d doing it this method. We are relying on a bit of luck with what we get in the books. But as things go, we've got a spawner. And that'll start pumping out books. We've got another knock back there, which is not great, not really useful. But with a bit of luck, we'll get some decent books out of that. And we're also getting bones and coal, which isn't bad, because obviously we can turn coals into diamonds if we wish. And I'm guessing we're not getting with the skeleton uh, with the skulls. So we maybe have to do it a different way to get with the skulls using the uh, drop method. There is also another method we could use. That is um, putting sa uh, quicksand on the floor there. The mobs would spawn, they'd fall into the quicksand, get suffocated and drop. I don't think that drops skulls either. So it looks like we're not going to get any skulls out of this. We're not getting any swords either. If we did the, the drop method with the they look quite funky, don't they? If we did the drop method with the golems or the melee turtles, then we'd get player drop stuff out of it as well. So player drop stuff would include loads of stone swords that we don't want, but it'd include it'd include wither skulls that we do want. So possibly the better way of doing this for wither skeletons would be a drop version, like which I've got on the other server. But just to get some XP out of this, just to get something going. I've joined this way, so this is probably better to do um, Enderman this way, because Enderman will still drop Ender Pearls this way. With the skeletons, you may be better doing a drop, a drop version. So a drop version, pretty much, be that would be, I think, about 23 blocks in the air. The mobs would land in this little square, and you'd have a little golem in there. And instead of having this here, you'd just have the, you'd have the brain in a jar here. Which would collect the XP, which you could then click on and actually put XP onto your own XP. And you'd need a transposer or something in the middle to collect all the drops because the golem won't get the drops. Or you could have the melee turtle here, or a row of melee turtles. And if you're doing it that way, you'd want a bit of water across this side, just pushing the skeletons to that side. So if, if you use the water flow mechanics, you can push mobs towards the grander, uh, well, what would be the, the melee turtles. And the dead kill it that way, and would uh, dead give up. They'd, they'd give the drops as well. So there we go. It's a it's a grinder. It's um it's it's a good way of getting items. It's, this is an item grinder, not so much uh, XP grinder. Um, we can set up an XP grinder as well using different method. The next one we'll probably set up is a blaze blaze spawner, and the blaze spawner is quite a good one to use the turtles with because you can use water to damage the blazes and the turtles finish them off and you get the drops. Um, there we go, one spawn at right. So that's probably it for this episode. We've covered some spawning mechanics, what you can use to get XP and stuff like that. Just before we go, uh, I found I saw something useful on the forum yesterday. Shows you how much fuel you need to run a liquid boiler. So I'll just put it on there. This is buckets where for fuel. If you're using biofuel, which is this orange stuff that you get with this, you'd need. So we've got four buckets worth in there being held in there. You can see I put a couple more seeds in there. See, it's up to that'd be 980. If you, if you could keep this stocked with all them different types, that'd be 980. A 
course, if we get two more in there, that would be its full 1440 millibuckets per, per set. So it, it, that efficiency quite works quite well. This is how much you need. You need 697 buckets worth to warm up this boiler. And then you'd need 36 buckets an hour to keep it running. And then the actual build craft fuel, which you can get from bees, which is pretty powerful. You'd need 233 buckets, so a third. And you need 12 buckets an hour to keep going. So that's that's what you'd be aiming for production-wise to maintain a liquid high-pressure boiler running 24-7. 12 buckets an hour once you've warmed up. But you see the warm-up's quite expensive. The warm-up's pretty heavy. That's like five hours worth. You see it's a lot more than five hours worth running. It just takes 60. Five hours warming up takes 230. So I think it's five hours, maybe a bit, a bit more. But you see it's quite expensive. This is working away. Yeah, I'm pretty confident that no mobs are going to spawn outside of here. I'm also pretty confident we're not going to get any wither skulls. Well, it's a bit of a shame, but um, that was the first one we had. Unfortunately, we we can't break that because it wouldn't be a wither, a wither soul cage anymore. We could possibly move it with the portal gun. I've not tried that. So we could look into that. As you see, this guy is filling up pretty quick. We've probably got more books in there already, so at some point we'll have to see what the um see how much space we've got in this. There we go, we've got another couple of books. We've got sharpness free, which is quite nice, fire protection free. Not bad. So I'll keep that going for a bit and I'll uh, bid you farewell. So as always, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for all the kind messages saying congratulations on a thousand. Thank you very much, really appreciate it. And um, thank you for subbing, thank you for watching, thank you for any comments, likes, messages, um, criticism, all very welcome, all very welcome. Thank you very much, and I hope you join me next time. Cheers. Bye.